Welcome to The Daily Swap. Willkommen, I am with Carlos. My hello, friend. hello, Team Kegels. What crazy guys up to? Today, today marks number five, Daily Swiggity Swole. And I am here with Carlos M. De Oro. You see him on my Snapchats. You see me on his Snapchats. Unfortunately, you see him, but he's getting sexier. We're working on getting him sexier. Well, I'm um, sexy. And you know what? Let's just jump right into it. You saw me, I was here, God, a month ago? No, last week. <laughs> last week. And... You know, of course, I wasn't here. Eli was here. It wasn't me. And talked about his transformation, like his journey into transformation. So we're going to do, we'll take some questions. Uh, we're going to talk about his updates first. I want him to speak. I want him to kind of give you the rundown. So I've been helping him, talking about nutrition. We're going to actually do a leg workout today. Might even periscope some of that. Going to YouTube some of that. It's going to be nasty. Going to show him, going to crush his legs. And he's going to get some good video of me doing some squats. Like a boss. Like a boss. <laughs> I get so excited we go live. like a fucking wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bear lad. So give a uh, give the crew an update. Those of you that are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, tell them about your journey thus far. Give everyone that doesn't know you an update. Um, you know, introduce yourself briefly. Keep it oh, tight, course. and then we gotta do like, we gotta do an intro video. But give a little intro about what you, who you are and what's going on for those of you that don't know. For those that don't know, absolutely. Um, the name is Carlos M. De Oro. You can find me on Snapchat. It's where I'm on the most right now. I'm in the process of starting my own YouTube channel. I am an automotive expert, and I also have an online store selling some good stuff. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, I started this journey about, I would say, what, two weeks now, maybe? Two weeks or so. Yeah, two weeks. And at first, I started with just my diet. Um, uh, the diet was something that I really had to get down and buckle down with because I am all about convenience, and unfortunately doesn't work too well for the gut. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I worked on the diet, and this week I started adding working out. I've gone to the gym about four times already since the last show, and I must say it is getting easier, the food part. The exercise, not so much. But uh, the food is getting easier. I'm starting to prefer healthier foods just because of the way it makes me feel. My energy levels are up. And, yeah, meal prep is definitely key. Um, uh, and what's what what I've noticed a huge difference is is I'm actually my belt size because I've actually already gone down one belt size, which is shocking considering I've only been doing this for two weeks. But yep. uh, it makes you know it excites me for 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 you know for shit to come. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the love. Um, uh, and as far as that, Dash here has been extremely helpful and annoying at times. But <laughs> my, beard, my, my beard my beard helps. Yeah, the beard helps. And then um, uh, well, pretty much what's been happening or, or what's going to happen today is he's going to show me how to do legs properly because I know myself my form is horrible. Proper. And I usually try to stay away from it simply because of, you know, legs suck for me. But uh, follow me on Snap because you'll probably see how bad my legs are tomorrow, right? Yeah, <laughs> legs are going to be brutalized. Because I know, for one, I can barely walk when I do my legs. So that will put you through one hell of a workout. Yeah, <laughs> some yeah. of you, some of you on um, on Periscope have watched me do legs before. You've seen me some of my leg workouts where I post the stuff up. Uh, you've seen some of the YouTube videos for legs, and a lot of that is actually, you know, it depends because I'm setting up the camera, and but when my focus is on point, if mm. I'm doing it, it's gonna <laughs> Oh, it's going to be great new content for us today because not only are you guys going to watch me get my ass kicked, but you're going to see uh, this guy at a better angles because I'll be filming. It's going to be intense. And if you notice, Team Kegels, Team Kegels. And it's perfect. Right under the K and the S, you can pinch the nips right there. So, Damn, that's Ooh, dead on. It, Did you do that on purpose? If, 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 if you get a Kegel shirt, you will get, on the inside, I have modifications where there's nice little pads so you can get a good, you can get a good grab. So it's right, it's localized. Uh, let's talk about, no, I'm joking. Let's talk about the um, obstacles. So originally it was just kind of getting it done and getting it started. Now that you are on your way, now that you are kind of like rolling with this, what do you find is, like what's your challenge now? I know I know you're, you're saying you've done four workouts, you lost weight, so you're motivated. You're more invested. Once you, once, once you start seeing results, you are going to 
automatically get more invested in your fitness. One of the biggest thing that I biggest things that I saw when I first started training, uh, just personally, is when I first started seeing my bicep. I saw I saw a little like you know the bump. I saw you know I was filling out a little bit. Like holy shit, this stuff actually works. And then I was in. I was hooked. So that now obviously you're more hooked because we're invested. We have you know got all this. Um, uh, you, you have to apply yourself because now we have an audience that are watching you and supporting your journey. What do you find is your challenge now? Like, what's your next thing that you find is like, man, I got to get over this hump. This is something that's going to be a challenge for me now. Now that I'm started, what's the what's the next move? Well, my biggest hurdle now is still getting to the gym. Once I'm there, it's it's fine. Why? why? Getting to the gym? Why? why? Honestly, it's been time for me. It's 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 been a bit of a struggle. I'm very tight on time. I work at late at night. I teach a course all the way till eleven o'clock at night. Sometimes looking for those tissues again. For the tissues, <laughs> I got a violin. I told you it's in the corner. Just start playing it. Um, uh, but time really has been my biggest constraint. I'm not using it as an excuse. Even on last Saturday, Saturday is usually my yeah. most chillax day. Mm-hmm. I got on a bike and I started riding my bike all the way to the gas station with flat tires. And let me tell you, that was a hell of a workout. But because of that, I felt better. You know, I felt better without the day. And mm-hmm. when I put a piece of bread in my mouth, I didn't, I didn't feel like it was the end of my life. You know, although you know, try not to do it too much. Anyway, <laughs> well, I mean, once you stop putting things in your mouth, you know, things will start moving in the in, 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 in the, the right direction. In the right direction. Yeah. Right. But time has really been an issue. But I have to sneak them in when I can. For example, this Monday. My daughter got sick, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Well, now I can't even leave the house." I saw that you're like a curveball. Yeah, like your like, follower snaps. He's like, you know, it's tapping all day, and I'm. I kind of knew it's like, oh, crap, you know, things are gonna yeah, like when slide off. I mean, when your daughter's sick, I mean, I still ate good. I, I well, what are you gonna I, do? You gotta take care of her. Yeah, I gotta like, take care of her. I mean, yeah. those, those are responsibilities, that, yeah. and that's life. That's gonna happen. The problem is, is just making sure it doesn't derail you and get back on it. And that's why he's here today because he's gonna yeah. make sure I get back on the rail. And, and, as far as exercise goes, right? Like. And the, the accountability is a huge part of it. So if you have a support system, like his wife is very supportive of his journey, and of course he has me. And now one of the benefits to you the live this. broadcast is that everyone here that's following his snaps, is following my snaps, is following this little journey. As we check in, and as he checks in, you know, you get to see, and you get to encourage, and you get to, you know, uh, uh, promote all this. Use your daughter as a weight. That's good one. There's actually there's actually workouts out there where people are posting things where they use their kids and like get them involved because the girls like you know the kids are you know playing or they're riding your back. You're doing pushing them on their back. They're holding your feet while you're doing sit ups and stuff like that. So it could be uh, useful. So I'm also have like some workouts that I'm posting coming out of her nose like this. Well, when they're home, when they're really (laughs) really young. Yeah, but you have um, (laughs) you have things where you know there are workouts I'm gonna be posting where you can. You know, do this at home, do this in a park. So I have some things I did at a park where you could do it at home, you could do it outside. So we'll be posting some functional movements and functional exercise that you could do anywhere because not everyone has time to go to the gym. Absolutely. But there's always something you can do. Obviously, he has a schedule where he can go to the gym. You know, you're not always going to feel like going to the gym. And on my Snapchat, you always see me going like, man, I really don't feel like going in, but then I am myself up and I go. In terms of you know, daughter being sick, you can't go to the gym. You cannot make it. Well, yeah, you got to take care of your girl, but there are things that can be done around the house where, you know, she's sleeping and you're home. There are circuits you can do 10, 15 minutes even. You can get a badass high intensity interval workout and, and get it done. So let's, really let's, we'll, we'll keep on talking. We'll banter. Let's talk. Let's have some questions. Hey, Dash, are you having him do the OPT model? Uh, you're getting technical, Tommy. Let's get into that. So OPT model means optimum performance well, training. Yeah, so obviously not. <laughs> well, the thing is, he wouldn't know OPT model if it slapped him across his face. No, I wouldn't. And later on, I might, I'm might i going to slap him with some phase three. So those of you that don't know what the OPT model is, the optimum, optimum performance training model set up by the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And what that means is pretty much taking a foundational approach and then progressing from there. So taking a corrective exercise, balancing out the body, working on stabilizer muscles, working on the joints, flexibility range of motion, proper form, and then building on strength after that. So it's common sense in a way, but it's common sense is not common. So when you're looking at the OPT model, you're building up slowly with uh, more balance and more stabilization, more kinesthetic and proprioceptive movements dominantly, and then you're building up on strength and strength endurance, and then more hypertrophy like bodybuilding style, usually after two or three months. So for him, you know, I'm teaching him as much as I can because I'm not around him all the time. If I, we live very far from each and other. And I will, too. I will tell you, I will tell you, we live about 40 miles. I will tell you if I give him 
And this is application versus, you know, in the book. You read in your books and your certifications, okay, OPT model, do 12 to 15 reps, go slow, do single leg stuff. If I show him that, if you show most of your clients that, you're not gonna have clients. You're not gonna have clients, you're not gonna do it. Too that technical. Stuff, it's boring, it's technical, and you don't see results quick enough because that kind of stuff, the stabilization training, no matter what anyone says, at the beginning you might see some change because you're finally getting off your duff and you're exercising. Did I just say duff? You did. God, I hate that word. I loved it. Getting off your ass, <laughs> getting off your your big old booty, that big old booty that you back it up. Back it up, back that ass up. Back it up, back it up. Back it up. <laughs> so if you like big butts and you cannot lie, you need to pay attention. So if you're doing OPT model and slow stabilization stuff, you're not going to be motivated. It's not going to motivate people. It's not a selling type of training. It works. It's scientifically proven. We like it. It's good for the body. The body likes it. But you have clients, you sign clients up and try to give them phase one. Chances are you're not going to have, if you don't deliver it properly, you're not going to have a lot of clients. You're not going to keep a lot of people. You need to implement that where necessary. I'm going to have them do a lot of planks. I have video on the hip bridge. I'm going to have them doing a lot of that. But getting people and going through the single leg stuff and balance <laughs> reaches, that's kind of great stuff for at home or to practice on their own. I'm not going to waste time training him with that in the gym. Um, it's not going to burn as many calories. It's not going to utilize or build as much muscle mass. If you do something safely or the proper weight in good form, depending on how bad the compensations are, you can get away with doing some strength training or a higher level of that OPT model. Um, than without. So it, it, it gets more into like teaching personal training and teaching a certification. And that's something that some of you already know that, that I taught certifications, I still do. And I've taught many, many personal trainers how to be personal trainers. And I'm be putting out a lot of content on improving someone who is in the field and improve their personal training. So I do a lot of daily swoles, obviously, where I do talking points for people that may be beginners in fitness, but I'm also going to probably be doing uh, some video series uh, advanced where I talk the way I normally talk, but geared towards people that are group exercise instructors, that do teach, that do teach you know, pitfalls of having clients, things that you should watch out for. Because of my, you know, I've been getting a lot of questions from people, from professionals, from group exercise instructors, from people that own gyms, how to improve class size, how to teach, how to find a good instructor, what they should look for in a good instructor. And that's what I do. So I'm going to get that application. But just make sure that, you know, what you're doing or what you're having people do, uh, or what you're showing people, it has to be entertaining. If people are bored, ain't gonna do it. That's why people like watching TV because they're entertained and they can change a channel and find something that they like really quick. If they don't like you, guess what? They're Especially not in today's you. world, to yeah. keep someone's attention is a lot of work. And that's why we love Snapchat. That's why, that's, we're, right. that's why we blow the fuck up out of Snapchat is because you get attention. People mm -hmm. see it beards. and it, beards, what about beards? What about beards, grow beards? Ash, you, you you love this, don't you? You love it. They, they help. help. Of course they do. I'm, I'm trying. Look, he's starting out. Look, see, he just he just started his fitness journey. Look, obviously, no. you can tell it's coming. He's it, it, it's on his way. It's on its way. It's no. on its way. See, I like a clean look. You know. Yeah, yeah. I got, <laughs> like a, I clean, got a beard on my you're like arm. A, you're like a clean look. You look yeah. like a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So more questions, but continue. Um, continue with. Okay, so getting to the gym. Now, once you get to the gym, what have you been doing? As more questions come in, what have you been doing so far? Those four times that you did work out, what have okay, you been doing? So what what you got? I've been splitting up the body parts. I've been doing uh, chest, tricep one day. The other day was uh, uh, triceps, and that's my cat. Um, uh, I did triceps and chest one day, back and bicep another day. Then I did shoulders one day, and then the, the, the fourth time I just went on a bike ride. So pretty much what I've been doing is... Making sure that I stay, I do three sets per exercises. I've been doing about two exercises, is it two? Yeah, two exercises per body part. And I've been trying to keep my reps between six to 15 reps. And on the last set, I'm making it a point to fail. And let me tell you, that push of making sure that you fail has been what's been tearing me apart because yep. I can only get to two exercises. And back when I used to work out regularly, I would do three to four for one body part mm -hmm. easily. And it's pretty nuts how quick I feel so fatigued, but the next day I'm burning up. Yeah, the on fire. the failure is what you have to be worried about or concerned with when you're starting off. The sub-maximal doing, let's say if you can do, if the only thing you can do is 14, 15, let's say 16 reps, and that's the maximum amount of reps, where 16 is like, ah, your arms are ripping apart. You need to stop before that. You need to stop at 10 or 11 or 12, because if you're going to a failure, especially for more than one set when you're starting off, you're gonna be crippling sore. It's that point of failure because you're going past that burning, that lactate threshold, and you're going to the point of severe and more severe micro trauma. And once you get that deep, you are going to be 
you're gonna be blasted, especially the next day, especially when you're starting off. So I got some questions like, how was your pain? So I guess that answers that question. Your pain was uh, it. I, I, I mean, not the worst. The worst one was probably the chest, and and I, and I know it's because day one I went in there and I was like, nah, I got this, ah, and I was trying to be. A, I really did it to myself. Like, I did, but and that pain was pretty bad. But I was moving around. It wasn't. I would say from a one through ten, maybe seven. Well, you didn't do. You didn't do like excessive to failure. You didn't do no. like like I said to exercises yeah. per body part. Right. Because that's really all I could do. I would try. Right. I tried to get on the third one. I said, Nah, this ain't happening. Like, yeah. and, I, and like you said, I'm not trying to hurt myself. I know it's my first time. Yeah, well, start back. Like, starting like, like over. So. Start, starting is the so you have uh, you, the most important thing to understand is that there are different humps when you're starting off training. There's different humps when you start off with your fitness. There's the initial like. Except in the fact, like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this move. I'm going to make this actually happen. Then there's, okay, when can I schedule this? How am I going to do this? And a lot of people, they're like, I want to work out, but I don't know where to start. And they don't even get started because, like, where am I going to begin? It's kind of like a business or anything else. Where do you start? Of you just You just fucking do it. You, just you do it. You go. I mean, obviously... Is lucky if you have a resource like my page and following him and following this little journey because now you're getting some real live content. You're seeing it as it happens. It's not edited and all flissy flossy for for YouTube where it's like, okay, they can put anything or fake transformation. This is a real dude going through it, talking about his trials and tribulations as it's occurring. This is not after the fact. You're watching it live. You can watch it on YouTube after. It's going to be there. But this is actually happening live. You're seeing his psychology change. Now, he finally... First off, decided he wanted to make a difference, he wanted to change. Then he figured out how, okay, I'm gonna get a gym membership, I'm gonna go at this time, I'm gonna start eating these foods. Now, even for myself and for anyone who's experienced, even for professional bodybuilders who are in the Mr. Olympia, as you get older, every year, your body's always changing. So what worked when I was 22 doesn't work now. I don't look the same way I did when I was 22, okay? I'm 32, I don't work out the same way as I did 10 years ago, okay? I could try, or I try in a sense, but I don't have the motivation and I understand how the body works and I'm not trying to deadlift 500 pounds. Yeah. I did that two or two years ago. You know, I'm not taking anabolics. I don't recover super, super fast. And what's the point? Why would I deadlift 500 pounds? What, what comes after that? Makes a cool little like Instagram video. What then? 505? 510 what's the amount of weight going up. what's the amount of weight that's going to hurt my disc what's the amount of weight that's finally going to give me a stress fraction what's the amount of weight that's going to end my well-being for the rest of my life it's not worth it you can hurt yourself of course doing 135 but the risk is a lot lower you can keep your form there's no need to go that heavy it's all ego it's all ego and that has to stop for most people it's not about the weight it's about how you use it it's about your sequence about your diet and nutrition and that's okay? something that I've changed a lot because of you because honestly before when I would go to the gym my goal because that's just the way it's programmed in people's heads is right. oh I gotta go up and wait number I gotta go up and number. wait the number the number yeah, the number you're born counting 1, right. 2, 3, 4 right, Ooh, right. 15, 20, 25, 30 exactly so I'm always thinking oh I need to go on a higher higher weight or whatever and now I've changed it is nutrition the hardest part yeah well, I, I'm gonna get into that now um, uh, but definitely the the counting of the of the weights once you get over that and you realize, hey, it doesn't matter what the weight number is, it's, it's, it's about the work and the formation and all that, that's been making it better for me. Um, uh, as far as the nutrition, there has been a lot of trial and error. There's, a, there's been a couple foods that I've realized, yo, if I eat this, I'm never going to get full and I'm just bound to cheat. You know, like I felt that way about... No satisfaction. Right, like I, I felt that way about spinach. Like I, I hate spinach. Like I hate greens. I, I really struggle to eat them. The only way I can put greens in my body is by liquefying them and making a liquid out of them. That, and they come like, out the same way. And it, it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat it if you hate it. Uh, uh, we're gonna hold have that you one. Seen this guy? Have you seen this guy drink his kale? Not like, true. Uh, eat it if you should eat it. Right. Uh, that, okay. Hate it. Okay. I, well, we're, I strongly we're, dislike. Strongly finish. just uh, eat something else if something else works. If horse manure was a food and horse manure will get you muscle and it will get you lean, then you figure out a way to eat it. Or you I, hate to, I hate to break it to any of you. I hate to break it to you, but if it's good for you, if your body can digest it and you just don't like the taste... Suck it up and eat it. If you want results, I'm, and I'm not saying this to be rude. I just want right, to get this right, point right, strongly right. across. Um, have a different green. You can. 
You can. That, that, I'm not saying there isn't another option. Like if you hate brown rice more than anything, but sweet potato works too, then yeah, eat sweet potatoes. I mean, yeah, I'm not, that's not like you know up for the real right. thing. But food is a tool. Get away from the thought and this mentality that food has to be oh wine and flavor this and this entertainment. Food has always been entertainment. You go to the movies, you get shit to eat. You know, food can taste good. There's certain things your body craves. The reason why it tastes good is because uh, the reason why it tastes good because your body craves certain things like sugar and your body you're getting such a quantity of this it's too concentrated so your body craves it and then you get addicted to that and then fruit starts tasting like crap because it's not hyper you know saturated with these artificial flavors right. I mean, things aren't supposed to be that sweet in nature like pineapple is super sweet but you're eating sour patch kids and these candy and like nerds rope and all that stuff and all of a sudden pineapple isn't going to taste as sweet because you're getting overstimulated those taste buds really what's really important is that food is a tool Get away from food as entertainment. If it works, eat it. I don't want to hear about it. Just do it. You want results, but you're not eating because, oh, you don't like the taste? I don't like the taste of water. Uh, I'm so, I hate to break it to you. Water has no taste. Drink it. Put some lemon in it. Drink it. Yeah, I'm surprised how sweet carrots taste now, especially when you get quality food. You don't live in the United States, so you get quality vegetables. Uh, United States, they get, you get carrots that taste like crunchy bricks. So, yeah, other countries luckily get food that tastes like real food. Um, put meal in your water. Meal is a little. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't really know what's in that stuff though. Probably food coloring. It's food coloring. I mean, now look. Here's the thing. I eat sour patch kids, so I'm not going to talk from a hypocritical point of view. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say it has no sugar. Yeah, but it has a lot of chemicals in it. It's really hard for me to talk and insult something like meal because I eat sour patch kids. I would not put Mio in water regularly, and I also don't eat Sour Patch Kids regularly in that sense. I know I post about it, but I eat it, I only eat it, I don't eat it when I'm not, if I don't work out, or I don't work out today or in the morning, I'm not eating Sour Patch Kids. I leave them in my car so I can't get to them. I eat them when I work out before, during, or after. I don't um, eat them before. So you don't want to, be careful flavoring water with anything artificial because you want to drink water regularly. So if you're always drinking flavored water, you really do get hooked onto like drinking flavored water. Yeah, um, water is the easy part because this is just well, a lot of, a lot of like people, your body naturally. Hate water. A lot, yeah, of people. a lot of people do hate water, and and, and I know I've, I've heard that a bunch of times too. But once yeah, you start uh, well, drinking hate, it, like I mean, what's to hate water? It's it's water. I mean, I know that's because I, I, I they'd know. rather drink Coke, or, well, or, or, right. or or whatever you yeah, know, that's or a suck, juice. That's or, the suck it up part. That's like using it as a right, tool. Right, it's a right. tool. Oh, I need to screw something in. Well, guess what? Use a fucking screwdriver. You're not going to use like a hair dryer to screw something in. That's the thing. I mean, for example, like. I understand drinking water all day long can drink, be drink, 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 drink. Oh, damn it. That was good. All right. So anyway. Oh, that was good shit. Drink a gallon and a half a day. Boom. Right. Is this true where you should drink at least one ounce for every pound that you weigh? Uh, an ounce I, for every... I found that to be no, way too much. An ounce for every pound? Holy shit. That'd be 200 ounces. That would be... Okay. I would say in terms of... You're about, I would say about you know, at least half, you know, half your body weight um, in water a day in ounces. Now, here's the thing. It depends on climate. Depends on how much water you need. How much you're sweating. How much you're sweating. Like down here in Florida, you walk outside, you're swamp ass. So like you lose a lot of water if you're exercising once or twice a day. If your workouts are really intense, what a lot of people don't understand is that you're sweating Right now, I'm sweating, he's sweating. I don't feel wet, but I'm perspiring. So you're losing water consistently throughout the day. So if you're not drinking water to replenish, now, especially after a workout, you need to be replenishing your water. People weigh themselves after a workout, you didn't lose fat, you lost water. So let's make sure that you drink enough water to um, to re- you know compensate for that after. Yes, so food, f- f- food has water, food has water. I'm preaching, I'm preaching, brothers and sisters. The preach is here, Reverend Swole. So you want to make sure that you drink enough water, especially before a workout. You want to be drinking at least um, half a liter to a liter two hours before your workout. So I don't want to get too far off topic, but drinking enough water before, chugging water during, that's why you feel sick. If you're drinking water just before on the way to the gym, you're going to be dehydrated because that water is going to sit in your stomach and your body is going to go sympathetic. When you start working out, it's going to slosh around. You're going to feel like hurling up water. you got to be drinking long before. So if we're working out in two hours, we're chugging water now. Absolutely. By the time we're in the gym, we'll be sipping and cruise control, but the water will already be through our stomach, through our intestines, absorbed into the bloodstream, shuttled around throughout the entire body, getting to the cells, shuttling to the cells. It takes time. That's why it takes two hours. Uh, honestly, that's pretty quick to get everywhere and to saturate. Remember, it's not like you're just drinking. Ah, it goes to the muscles. It's got to get to your toes, to your quads, and you have a 
if you're like me, <laughs> you have a lot of quads and a lot of muscles to get to. But that's, you know, it depends on your body weight. So fat, of course. if you're talking about uh, water by weight, it really goes more on, um, focus more on that fat free mass, like the muscle mass. Right. Of course you have, you know, which then well, yeah, but, but, that, means, but, but that, that includes. I mean, we're talking about fat free. We're talking about organs too, because obviously it's not just the muscles you have to feed. You know, water feed. You know, the liver and the heart and you know bloodstream. I think it was Ash that just said that three liters is what they recommend for in in uh, like in Australia. Average. Three liters is, like an is less than than a gallon, so yeah, that can't so, be right. Yeah, three so, liters is like yeah, three. Yeah, no, there's four, four liters in a gallon, so. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, no, oh, right for what? For the average person? Yeah. Well, it depends on what that is. You know, it depends on what you're talking about. You're talking about three liters for... A water. Three liters for the average person that exercises because the average person does not exercise. Yeah, that's now, true. But, but also the average person needs more water than they think they do. And that's why the average person is overweight. And I don't know... If, we didn't talk about this yet. Let me, oh, let me hit that thing with the hunger. We talked about it in the car and the snaps. The oh, reason why... Yeah, on, 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 on my Snapchat... Um, what's up, baby? The the reason why you, people generally overeat is because of the thirst mechanism and the hunger mechanism. The body needs water more than food. You can go about two, maybe three weeks if you have a lot extra, if you're healthy enough, without food, like starvation. We know that from like you know World War II, concentration camps, or people right. who got malnutrition, nasty, stressed, physical, emotional stress, when hope was the only thing that kept them alive and they survived. Like some sick stuff. You look at those pictures, you want to throw up. Um, Water, a couple days, a few days, three days, four days maybe, and you can have severe issues and you can die from dehydration. That makes water more important to the body than food. Absolutely. Okay. So when you're dehydrated, your body is begging from water. Your body is begging for water. I'll talk about salt in a second. You need to get plenty, plenty, plenty of water in. Now, if you're eating and you're hungry all the time, it's because your body is actually thirsty. Your body knows that it gets water and moisture from food. If you eat the most burnt up toast, there's no moisture in there. But you know what that tastes like, it's like chalk. Well, that means, you see how much moisture most food has because it doesn't taste like burnt toast. Mm -hmm. So your body is eating and usually when you eat, you drink. So you're getting hydration. So this kind of hydration is important uh, you know, during with your food, but when you're drinking shakes, and that's why smoothies are. He was talking about how he has watermelon, which is 92% water, watermelon, berries, and water, and all that stuff. And when he drinks that shake in the morning, guess what? He feels full the entire day. It's because he's really he's thirsty. You don't need as much nutrients as you think to maintain. If you're working out a lot, you need more nutrients, but you're not going to be as hungry if you drink water. So, a great way to put your caloric intake in check to make sure you're not eating too many calories is that you drink like a glass of water with lemon because it's very alkalizing uh, before like 10-15 minutes before you eat and after that water that you drink chances are you're not as hungry or your real true hunger will come out if you don't eat if you're dehydrated you're going to feel really hungry and you're going to eat too many calories and you're going to gain weight so talking about salt yeah when you work out you lose electrolytes and electrolytes are just elements that conduct electricity so they're called electrolytes magnesium potassium salt uh, sodium those things are lost during exercise. I always put some Celtic sea salt. Speaking of salt, during uh, in my water when I work out. How do you feel about seasoning your food? Like, how do I feel about it, or do I? Do well, do you want? No, no. You don't. I okay. season it with bacon. I cook bacon and I cook the burgers in the bacon. <laughs> okay, Grease. Well, so then my burgers taste like bacon. I, I see a, a cup. He eats a lot of bacon. No, I know oh. he eats a lot of bacon. <laughs> I'm fully aware of that. Guy goes to the grocery store every day with a new pack of bacon. Oh, no, I'm. I just got hungry. I gotta go. See ya. Take care. Later, Pixie. Um, he's clearly not worried about salt. <laughs> Myron and Gaines. <laughs> I'm not worried about salt. I'm not. I'm, salt is overblown. Salt is overblown. If you're getting salt from certain sources, if you're exercising properly, drinking enough fluids, and you're not, you're putting table salt on food. Most food has table salt, quality salt. And without getting, I, I want to get back to what you're saying, but this is a good topic. Uh, this is a whole other topic, actually. But table salt is 99% sodium chloride. The reason why when you dump the salt out it bounces across the table is because not only is it 99% sodium chloride, but they emulsify it and they coat it so it doesn't stick together. Okay, So then you have this stuff that's going in your, in your system where it's way too much sodium and chloride. Um, you need to use way too much of it and it's almost like your body's fighting off an infection and has to retain water and you know dilute it. 
and dilute mm-hmm. the salt in your system. When you consume some like Celtic sea salt, which is only about maybe 60, 65% sodium chloride, you're getting the other 40, 40%, you know, 35, 40% uh, trace minerals and nutrients that help create that balance. It could actually lower high blood pressure, raise low blood pressure, help you lose weight, help you flush water out and saturate the body with water where it's needed and shuttle into the cells and stuff like that rather than retain extra water and cause bloating and inflammation and so forth. So sea salt then, huh? Um, not just like the sea salt, like, okay, this is like, you know, a less sea salt. Uh, you want to get certain quality salt. So like a quality Himalayan salt or the Celtic sea salt from Whole Foods. Now you can get coarse ground or fine ground from Whole Foods, like a bag. Um, for like three dollars, four or five dollars, so it's not expensive. And the benefits are that it only takes about a third of that amount of salt to taste the same as regular table salt. So oh, you good use to know. You're using, <laughs> no, you're using. So you're using. It's more effective, and you're using less. Okay. So and you can use that wisely. And there's like um, different books out there, like salting your way to health, and all these different types of things. Resources where you learn, like, wow, salt isn't the bad thing. It's the shit that these companies put into it that, as usual. that finger the government's butthole mm-hmm. these are the companies that are putting salt in all this shit and it's killing people and then we get a repetition salt's bad for you yeah and so is saturated fat I just did a whole thing uh, Instagram post I just did a video on bulletproof coffee and fat and oil and coffee you know grass fed butter carry gold and stuff like that you know, all of a sudden it comes out, it's wow, they shit. banned fat and they upped sugar. And then that's what gave everyone heart disease and metabolic X syndrome. So you, you realize oil too. Yeah, just because they say it, just because they say it and like, oh, salt's bad for you. Yeah, it's bad for a reason because you're putting bad fucking salt in there. You use some real shit, ain't so bad anymore. You start moving and you eat real food. Guess what happens? Oh, you get healthy and you start losing weight. You look like a human being and not like a pinata. Oh, big freaking surprise. Mm-hmm. I'm ranting. I'm going off. Yeah. Erica asked the question. Is lemon juice in water comparable to lemon? Very different. Lemon juice? You know, bottled lemon juice? I know that's just not regular lemon juice. They put all types of shit in there. Yeah, but is that what you're talking about? You're talking about like the lemon, like the like the fake little lemon container? That right, you, the, that the green. I'm, what I'm guessing is the green container that comes with the lemon juice. Oh, she put it right there. Yeah, she, there sure. we go. Is lemon juice in water comparable to lemon? Feige, is that what you're talking about? You're talking about the... Uh, it has preservatives. Yeah, that stuff. That but, uh, but I'm not sure if that's what is meant, like eating lemon. Hi, Dasha. Yes. Okay, so the artificial lemon, yeah, it has preservatives, and that's shit. If you have a real lemon, now you can get the argument for, versus, like, can let's Somebody's say... um mad. No. Mad? <laughs> no, I'll give it a thumbs down. What do I... Care? Can you do that? You no, give like a, no, but you can put the mad emoji. Yeah, good. Get mad. Get mad. Get mad. Now, you just miss my... Yeah, okay. That's my mom. Mom is texting me. Yeah, I'll explain that text. Because uh, when you are, yeah, the preservatives are not good, of course. And when you have, you can get into like maybe conventionally grown or organic lemons and the difference. But where you're, the thing with lemon is that you would say, would you say lemons are acidic? I would say so. Okay, most people would because they are. Inside the body, they're alkaline. They're the opposite. The alkaline ash now, that's done through testing, but you can look it up, do your research, don't take my word for it, educate your sales. Lemon is alkaline, it's alkalizing for the body. So when you're looking at pH, you look at a zero to 14 scale. So one would be battery acid, so a low on the pH scale, battery acid, mm-hmm. not good. Right. Um, blood and water, about seven and 7.4, so that's mid-range. So you obviously want to live somewhere around when you get really acidic in the body lactic acid builds up like real fatigue exhaustion is like 6.64 6.65 so your body really lives in a range of like you know 6.6 or so you know have really extreme Absolutely. fatigue to like 7 7 plus so your body creates this balance so you don't want to do really acidic or really alkaline you can go too far alkaline because guess what like 13 14 on the alkaline scale is bleach obviously drinking bleach will kill you so battery acid or bleach Neither of those are good, but watermelon and lemon are about a 9 or a 10, very, very alkaline. So even though lemon might seem acidic on the outside, inside the body when it gets converted because of the chemical reactions, you are alkalizing the body. So that's why when you're hungry, drink some water, put a little lemon in there, and it will balance your body out and you will feel the true hunger. So water with lemon is very, very good. And we can get into things like apple cider vinegar and stuff like that uh, later because that's amazing stuff too. Oh, geez. Somebody, <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. I She's said it and asking, I saw At the end of the story, long story, lemon juice allowed, yes or no? I, I, Simple answer. In the bottle where it's like preserved, 
No, that's a you. no. Get some lemons and squeeze them. Slice it out. Squeeze. Don't be so what fucking I like to lazy. Do, I've done it. Is I, is I'll, I'll get one of these right, and then I'll fill it up to the top with ice, and then I'll just Fresh cut lemon a, couple, a couple of slices like in perfect circles. And drop them in there. Shake okay, her watch, up. Watch me. Good watch. Watch me get lemon juice. You roll the lemon around to get like the juice and the rind. Done. You like Done. that? You like that sound effect? Sounds, Pretty accurate, sounds right? Sounds like you squirted in your pants. Yeah. I sharded. <laughs> <laughs> too many greens. Too many greens. Yeah. yeah uh, apple cider vinegar. That's that's gonna have to be another, not another that topic, should, but that ap- could probably be a whole topic for us. Ap- apple cider vinegar is fantastic. Now, eh, careful with this. Get the Bragg's organic apple cider vinegar. The one that says with the mother, with the pulp, and you get a you know. General supermarkets anywhere, you know, fancy places. Mm-hmm. Uh, you shake it up, and you you can take a little little teaspoon in a you know like a tablespoon in a big gallon of water, spread out, drink it throughout the day. Just be careful doing shots straight because it can like emulsify the the teeth, it, the vinegar. You don't want to like you know keep that the enamel. So it's like shit too. I'm guessing. Well, it burns, but you know if you mix it with your water, it's so very, it's like a shot of alcohol. Yeah, so it's great. It's a natural remedy for um, acid reflux. Not to mention changing your diet. So if you're having acid reflux, a lot of times making your diet more alkaline um, will will. Can I, can I have let Carlos have a cheat meal? Carlos can never have a cheat meal. Watch today as I tease him with Sour Patch Kids the entire workout because I'm going to be pounding him and he can't has any. Now he can have some eventually, but here's the thing: you have to train your body for a certain effect. When your body and think of it as this before we start wrapping this up it's momentum it's like a snowball rolling down the hill if you take a little snowball and you start rolling it and then you throw things in its path it's going to stop once you let that snowball you eat properly you're training year after year you know training you get that snowball that's rolling and bounding down the hill you throw a little twig in there or something in its path it's going to destroy it and smash it right over like a boulder okay like an avalanche once you get that thing rolling i could go out today pound a whole pizza and probably look leaner tomorrow Okay, so pizza. I know, right? <laughs> it's probably the thing I miss the most is a good pizza, man. All right. I love me some. Pizza. Once you start seeing results, here's the thing with getting into shape, and, and, and tell me if I'm wrong. Um, with cheating, and I know you've probably eaten some things along the way. When you're, I've actually been pretty damn good, I'm okay. pretty shocked at myself. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, with Tito's boy. Tito's boy. We all saw your snaps at the beach when you're like, oh, so normal's gonna was, kill me. That was a week and a half. That was two weeks ago. Yeah, and you started and I three drink. Ago. Like, what? Yeah, I can't drink? drink? Yeah, and you can't eat when you drink? Yeah. Yeah, I did cheat once. But that's it. For two weeks, that one meal, that's okay. That's okay for me. <laughs> Fuck this guy. All right? Yeah. Well, anyway. Um, uh, when you are when you start seeing those results, you don't... You almost don't... It, it kills or it really diminishes your craving for a cheat meal. Because you know... True. You start realizing, shit, when I do that, X, Y, and Z is going to happen. I can't... This is going to affect me negatively. So uh, take it from there. But like when you start seeing results, a lot of times you just lose the desire for those cheat meals because you know that's the opposite direction of what you just worked so hard to get to. Right. I mean, that's the part that really gets me from from cheating. It's just like, do I want to eat this meal and fuck up the all the hunger and suffering that I went through this entire week? And that's kind of like, listen, uh, preach. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it sucks. So. Now that I'm getting the ball rolling, I want it less, but it's hard, especially when my wife brings out some nice juicy cheeseburger, and I'm like, damn. Damn. And I'm, and I'm over here saying Angie's, like, supporting you. And she, she'll well, you. No, she does support me. Hey, she's she's cooking up the meals for me because I don't even have time to do that, so she's supporting. So Definitely this guy supported. doesn't have time to go to the gym. He's not even cooking his meals. Get to work, son. Get well, to work. I am. I'm here. You're here. And we are about to not be here. Thank you so much for joining. Here's what's going to go down today. Because those of you who are watching live, you get the little inside scoopalicious. He's at, at, I'm going to put this in the Facebook comments also, at Carlos, C-A-R-L-O-S, M. De Oro. It would be great if we, you have a pen right there? You can write it. I do have a pen. Most of you, I'll snap. You're following me on snap. We'll write this down. But follow him, Carlos M. De Oro. And we're going to be snapping. We're doing a workout, and we're going to snap from two different perspectives. So his snaps are going to show from his point of view, and mine are going to show from my point of view. So you can see mine. You're going to see his. You can watch them both at different times. So You'll see me complaining mostly. Yeah. So we're going to do. So show that to the people. Wow. That's wow. Horrible. Get, get in there. And it's backwards. Ah, uh, reverse camera. Carlos M. De Oro. <laughs> Carlos. You got a periscope. Carlos M. De Oro. Oh, Jesus, you're- all right. Well, oh, I'm gonna, well, first go, they, saw, they saw it. They saw it. You got yeah. it. 
All so, right. On Periscope, yeah. you can find me at Educated Grease Monkey. That's going to be my new show. I'm going to do a daily show about car talk. If you're into cars or know anybody that are into cars, send them my way. I am full of knowledge for that shit. Yep. That's Just true. Just like your boy is for health. That's true. So we're going to snap this stuff because we're going to change the oil on my car. Absolutely. And so you can follow both of our snaps. We're going to go do that right now so you can get it done and go pump some iron. And... Of really course, know. every day here, 12 noon each time, we're going to check back in. I'm going to do another live broadcast. We might even try to do a week. We're going to try to do a weekly thing. We'll see how it goes. But uh, we're going to be checking in and on the Facebook Live and Periscope. Check out my new videos. I'm posting like content like a fucking psychopath. He's a content on, whore. Yeah, I'm such a whore for content. <laughs> Driving while gaining. There's one post going to be posted today, another one later. I forget which one. I think it's 25. It's Get Your Mind Right. This is like probably the most depraved it's intense reverend swole comes out for the driving while gaining it goes absolutely nuts so check out the driving while gaining this will be up there this will be up online probably later tonight or tomorrow but Thank check you, it out Ash. yeah and let's give a nice round of applause if you're at home don't clap too loud because we got the microphone yeah, yeah. Uh, let's not get much uh, oh, so oh, 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 oh. <laughs> wow all right all right well <laughs> So thank you again for joining. I'll see everyone tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. Follow him. Follow me. Check out on Snap. We'll be blowing this up all day. All and day. get your pump on. It's hump day. So you know what? Let's show some booty. We got the Kegel shirts on. Let's show we got that. Yeah. So numb is booty. So numb Back that booty. ass up. I got the booty shake. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not going to. Because it's live. Yeah. Look at that. I got tons of hearts. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I get... If I get a hundred people to tune in live, I'll make it clap. Oof. But it has to be on Periscope I and Facebook. That. So I you have to get a hundred following live on Facebook and a hundred following live, and I will make it clap. Okay. Just make it clap. Pop, pop, pop. I won't be there for that. All right, it's got really weird. I actually thought you guys were going to show your butts. Uh, <laughs> Is that how you guys do down under? Down under, huh? Nah, I'm just joking. All, All right. right, see you next time. Enjoy your week. Game of Thrones. But it's like four days away, so I can't be too amped for that. Okay. So, I will... Who cares? This is not your life. This is my live broadcast, son. It this is, it is your my account. Right. Some... Game of Thrones. Yay! He's never seen it. Haven't. Harry Potter fan here. No, definitely not. <laughs> All, All right, right see you next time. See you manana. Later. Later.